Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and in today's video we are going to start a new session in biomechanics and kinesiology and that is posture biomechanics. We know that this is one of the important chapter like gait analysis and it's sometimes a bit tough to understand. We are going to simplify posture biomechanics in coming videos. In today's video we will see few important concepts in posture biomechanics such as what is posture, what is balance, and then what is stability, and then further we will analyze and understand what are the important postural control mechanism or postural control methods in human body. So let us explore into the posture biomechanics. Yes, to understand posture biomechanics, we often need to Define what is posture. Can any one of you guess what is posture? So for example, you are coming into a class, into your class in university or into your group of friends. You can evaluate each of your friends and tell about his posture. Like he is standing. My friend Mr. X is standing. Mr. Y is sitting and some of them may be standing on the top of the bench or sitting on the top of the bench, etc, etc. So it's not through any biomechanical analysis that you come to that conclusion or we come to that conclusion, but it's just by observing the orientation of the person or the alignment of the body of the person. So we can define posture as the alignment or orientation of the body so posture can just be defined as the orientation or alignment of the body in space. So that's how you come to the conclusion of the person's posture. Further, posture can also be defined as an attitude assumed by the body or an orientation assumed by the body either with support during the muscular activity or due to integrated function of different muscles. That's quite important. The posture that we see is not just because I have straight bones in my human, in my body, or it's not just because my femur is standing on the top of, uh, is aligned on the top of uh, femur, tibia and fibula and the angle joint. It's not just because of that. It is because of a coordinated action of different muscles and of course some other factors too but just for the time being understand the posture that we assume is due to the coordinated action of different muscles so you can define posture as an attitude assumed by the body either with the support during different muscular activity or as a result of coordinated action of different muscle group that's all about the definitions of posture and there are two type of posture or that's four sorry there are two type of postures and they are the static and dynamic posture the static one is when the body e and its segments are in equilibrium when it's when my body and my segments are in equilibrium for example when i am standing like this this is a static posture because my body and my segments of the body different parts or joints of the body or are in equilibrium but if i am walking like this if i am moving from here to here it's not a static posture when i am on the course of movement because my body and my segments are not in equilibrium so posture can be defined as having two different types one is static one which it means body and its segments are in equilibrium where for example standing sitting peacefully in a chair, lying down on a bed, etc. can be classified as or classified as static posture. And dynamic one is in which the body and its segments are in movement, for example, walking, running, playing, etc. Running, etc. That's all about the basic idea of the posture. And you should understand 
every person in the human body every successful movement in the body is initiated from a very simple static posture through the coordinated action of different muscle groups and if there is imbalance in any of those activities coordinated action of the muscle group or other factors the posture can be altered and then we move on to the concept of stability where we have already discussed the concept of base of support, center of mass, line of gravity, etc. If you haven't checked that video, kindly check onto that video right now or at the end of the discussion, the links are given. So stability can be defined as ability of the body to return to equilibrium once it's been displaced or disturbed. So that is not a stability. So stability is a skill that a person possesses or the body possesses or the ability of the body to return to its states of equilibrium. That is the rest or the equilibrium position, the neutral position. When its balance or equilibrium, it's been disturbed. That is known as the stability. Of course, stability and balance can be a confusing term. If you have any confusion on it, kindly refer to the previous video. And stability of the body can be altered by various factors. For example, we know the concept of center of mass, the imaginary point in which all body's weight is assumed, <clears throat> the line of the gravity, the vertical projection of the gravitational force, and the concept of base or support. So when your center of mass and when your line of gravity is within the base of support, within that base of support, the base of support of your body, then you are stable. If the line of the gravity and the center of mass slightly move outside of the center of mass, sorry, the base of support, your stability has been altered. If the center of mass and line of gravity moves to the periphery, to the outer side of the line of gravity, so the base of support, again, your stability is determined, disturbed. So when a person is most stable, that position is known as, or that position is when his center of mass, center of mass, line of gravity is within his base of support. For example, this position of mine. Now, when I'm standing like this, I'm very stable, but of course, if I am bending to the side, still I am stable because my line of gravity and center of mass is at least inside the base of support, but not in the center. If I am moving to, if I am leaning to one side, of course, my stability will be altered because my center of mass and line of gravity will be away from the base of support or not inside the base of support. So, if the center of mass of a person can be lowered, or if the center of mass is lowered, then the stability can increase. Or if base of support can be widened, then the stability can be increased. So let's look onto the following diagram where the different different aspects of the, of the aspect of the points that we have discussed, such as the center of mass, line of gravity, and base of support is being described. In this in this diagram, you can see that the first one is a well-balanced person where the center of mass is within the base of support and line of gravity also, then the unbalanced position where the center of mass and line of gravity shifts outside the base of support. And the next one, as I discussed, the center of mass is in the periphery or in the border of the base of support. And the final one, balanced center of mass is within the base of support, but not as much as balanced as the first position. So the most Unbalanced position in this one is the second one, the B, and a borderline balanced is C, and the well-balanced one is A, and center of mass is well within the base of support. I hope that concept is clear. And now we define the concept of balance. A balance is defined as the process through which the upright stance is maintained. That is, balance can be simply defined as it is a process. It is steps through which the upright stance is maintained or the equilibrium of the body is maintained. So that is known as balance. So how can we define balance again? Balance can be defined as the process through which upright stance is maintained. Individuals and individuals ability to maintain the line of gravity within the base of support is also known as balance. Ability of the body to maintain equilibrium that is also balance and then 
postural control mechanisms are there, different postural control mechanisms are there for the body to attain this balance or keep this balance. So balance can simply define as the ability or the skill of the poor person or the body to maintain equilibrium or maintain the equilibrium stance or stand upright it is also defined as an individual's ability to maintain line of gravity within the base of support and it can be also defined as ability of the body to maintain equilibrium so that is known as balance balance is the skill or ability of the person to maintain upright stance it can be also made uh, defined as the ability to maintain equilibrium so that is balance of course these terms balance and stability can be confusing if you have any confusion just refer back to the previous videos and it can be it, it can be clarified right so now we are going to discuss about the most important aspect in this chapter that is different postural control contributors how postural control is achieved in human body when for example now if this is an imaginary le lecture in your classroom i'm asking one of you to come forward and you're coming forward i just ask you to walk you can walk perfectly well i'm calling the next person and i'm asking him to walk but of course with his eye tied eyes tied or eyes covered what happens can he walk like the first person no he cannot he might fall off he might jerk off he might have some perturbations etc and he may not walk in a straight line now imagine the situation that i'm calling the first person who walked properly and i'm asking him to walk again can he walk perfectly he will walk more, far better than the second person whom I had tied the eye, even if the first person's eye is tied in the second attempt. Now, just uh, take on this concept, this example to your mind, and now we will understand what is posture control mechanism or how posture is being controlled. In posture control mechanism, there are different elements that are acting on. There are different factors that are contributing. Some sensory factors are there some muscular factors are there. Let us see what are all those factors. So postural control has contribution from visual system, vestibular system, somatosensory system, anticipatory postural adjustment mechanism and compensatory postural adjustment mechanism. So these five important steps are involved, five important factors are involved in postural control. Let us see two different mechanisms. Let's forget about the vestibular system. Let's forget about the visual system. Let's forget about the somatosensory system. And then focus on two important mechanisms that I told. One is anticipatory postural control adjustments and compensatory postural adjustment. So what do you mean by anticipatory postural adjustment? Anticipatory means the word itself is self-explanatory, anticipate. It is a postural control mechanism that the body adopts when it knows that its balance will be altered or when a non-perturbation, perturbation is some changes, some change in the position or some push or pull, something like that. So when some non-perturbation is acting, acts on the body. So that time, body has a postural mechanism that is known as anticipatory postural adjustment known as APA. That means the body, my body is now prepared to react to the situation. Let's give the best example. Now you are walking on the straight road and you see the road is slippery in some place or it's filled with water or something. What do you do? Do you walk in the same way that you are walking in the rough road or the normal road? Of course, no. Your body will adapt, your muscles will adapt, you will have more grip on, you will try to be more grip on your foot, you will try to be more vigilant when you are walking. Is that done by you yourself? Are you consciously doing that? 
of course you are consciously taking some effort at the same time body is preparing itself to so that is an example of anticipatory postural control where the body or human v anticipate the situation and react according to the situation for example our exam uh, our uh, the previous example that we described i'm asking a student to come forward asking him to walk fine i call the second person tie his eye and ask him to walk that's fine but the second person cannot do the task very properly but the third, again i'm calling the first person tying his eye and ask him to walk to the same place now he knows that he he knows that the first person, when he does his second attempt, he can perform better because he knows that he will be called now. Further, when I'm going to tie his eye, he has already anticipated that he will be asked to walk. And he is also aware of the situation. Previous experience to the task is there. He has already, he had already done the task so he have a previous experience so in anticipatory postural control we must have a previous experience that is an important uh, parameter for the anticipatory for anticipatory postural control the body should have a previous experience or previous exposure to the task then only you can like what you call you can react to that task so let's see what is anticipatory poster control in detail. It is a feed forward activation of trunk and limb prior to self-imposed balance perturbation or movement of the center of mass. As I defined earlier, muscle contract in contraction in anticipation to the movement. That's very important not as a result of the movement. It's not because of the movement that is happening, but it is because of the anticipation of the movement. Prior knowledge of the task is very essential. Reduce any side effects of the intended movement. That's what happening. When you're going to a slippery surface, you are anticipating the movement, anticipating that you are going to fall, and you are taking some postural control strategies, and these strategies will reduce the side effects or the negative effects of that task involved. If, for example, when you are standing still in the class, and you see one of your friend coming, running towards you, you know that he is going to pull you, definitely you, are anticipated to the situation and you may not fall but at the same time when you're standing and talking to someone in the class if your friend comes and pull you from the back side there is more chance for you to fall because you are not anticipated with the situation anticipatory postural control adjustment is a mechanism through which the body prepare itself for the movement now let's see what is compensatory postural control movement i think you can guess it now in compensatory postural control movement what happens is that body reacts to the situation. It is due to the situation. It is not anticipated. Because of the pull, because somebody pushes on you, your body reacts. That is the compensatory mom, compensatory postural adjustment. Here we don't need any previous experience. We don't need any previous exposure to the task. For example, uh, like the same case, if um if someone for someone someone of your friend is pulling you and your friend from the back side the way both of you are gonna react to this same perturbation the push the push is different because of course sometimes your muscles will be well adapted so you might not fall you are you might lean forward and suddenly stand because your body has prepared and compensated compensated to that movement by putting a check and balance on the muscle. Some muscle contract eccentrically, some contract concentrically. Whereas your friend may not be able to react that way and he might go and uh, uh, touch himself on that couch or on the table or sometimes may fall down. That is because the body muscles are not able to compensate same like you because he may not be fit like you. He might have some pain in his leg or something like that. So that is compensatory postural control mechanism here body reacts to the situation not anticipating anything but body reacts according to the situation so if there is a non perturbation so let us see what are compensatory postural mechanism it is activated motor compensation that occur when balance is disturbed important 
it is a feedback motor strategy and occurs in both predicted and unpredicted situations. If unexpected perturbation happen, then CPA acts first mechanism. In non-perturbation, APA and both CPA acts. So what did you that what did we see the so if the perturbation of the body is unexpected, CPA compensatory imposter mechanism acts. If it is known, APA anticipatory posture mechanism act but sometimes this anticipatory posture mechanism will be accompanied by this compensatory posture mechanism also for, to react well and react in a more better manner to the situation according to the gravity of the situation that's what it is been said like uh, occur in both predicted and unpredicted situation if it is unpredicted completely then cpa act if it is predicted cpa and apa can act or APA alone can act and it is a feedback motor strategy other one was feed forward most of motor activity this is a feedback because of the situation the body is acting here also body adjusts itself to maintain the equilibrium and to prevent the damage so if somebody asks you what are the different postural control mechanism then you have to write anticipatory posture mechanism and compensatory posture mechanism if somebody asks you what are the different postural control measures or different postural control uh, factors that contributors that affects on the human body then you have to expand that concept and add on the visual system the somatosensory system and the vestibular system also this is just two mechanisms but the complete process of the somatosensory process of postural control completely is acted by is done by five different factors two of them we have seen and now we have the visual system vestibular system and somatosensory system so let us see what is the contribution of the visual system in the visual system we can see the visual system has three different means of reacting to a situation. One is a smooth pursuit of them. These all are different type of eye movement. So here it is one is a smooth pursuit. Here the stabilization is done for slowly moving objects. Of course you can study a bit more in detail about it. That's not needed. Just understand the concept would be fine. So in the visual system, we have one measure that is known as a smooth pursuit, where uh, stabilization uh, is done for this slow moving object. Then we have the scanning system, which is reacting to the rapid small movements of both eyes. One is to the small movements. Then next one is for the rapid small movement and then next one is to the when the entire visual field is moving. So that is optokinetic system. So in visual system we have three different means of attaining the postural control. One is the smooth pursuit that is reaction to slow moving objects or slight motion of the human body then that is known as the smooth pursuit when there is rapid slight movements that reaction by the eye is known as the sciatic system and then optokinetic one when the entire body is moving when the entire field of moving motion entire field of motion or the entire field is moving then it uh, feedbacks to the retina that mechanism is known as optokinetic system you just need to remember its name and just briefly what that system is done it's not a complete discussion of course we can't discuss that completely and it's not relevant here too the next one is the vestibular system you know the vestibular apparatus situated inside the ear has a very important role in the balance for example i'm calling third person from your class whom i know has vertigo okay the balance problem he is taking the tablet of them and i ask him to walk even without the eye being covered if he is being affected by vertigo right now what happens is that he cannot walk in a proper manner that is because the vestibular system has a crucial role in balance control so that is the vestibular system 
let us see what the vestibular system does in so the vestibular system reacts with the position of head with related to the gravity it measures the rate of the movement angular displacement as well as the position of the head of the movement due to the mechanoreceptors in the semicircular canal of the vestibular system that's all about the vestibular system you may not need to just remember the vestibular system and just remember that it is due to the mechanoreceptors in the west semicircular canal we move on to the somatosensory system let us see what somatosensory system does in postural control the somatosensory system senses information from the periphery related to the pain touch temperature and proprioception that is joint position sense okay so the muscle spindle which is one of the important factor that important uh, two factor that contribute towards the what you call somatosensory system is uh, it reacts to the static and dynamic changes in the muscle length then we have the golgi tendon organ another uh, another important sensor uh, in the body in the human body or another important contributor to the somatosensory system the golgi tendon organ it reacts to the static and dynamic muscle changes in the muscle tension the other one was static and dynamic changes in the muscle length this one reacts to the static and dynamic changes in the muscle tension and then joint receptors they react to the change in tension within the joint capsule and associated ligaments so you don't need to study in detail about the somatosensory system, but you should just understand somatosensory system collects information or gives information to the brain from different sensation like pain, temperature, touch, and jojo in position sense. In that, there are three different factors involved or three different contributors. One is the muscle spindle, which is acting uh, for the static and dynamic that is the equilibrium stage and non-equilibrium stage reaction of the changes in the muscle length so when my body is moving the changes in the length of the muscle will be sensed by this muscle spindle and it gives the feedback and helps in attaining the postural control then when there is a change in the tension there may not be change in the length, but there may be change in the muscle tension. Then the Golgi tendon organ acts and it helps in the feedback. And when there is some change in the receptors or joint position sense, for example, when I'm walking on different surfaces, when the loading happens on my ankle, the receptors on the joint position sensors on the ankle activates and gives the feedback and all these different mechanisms or different contributors helps together in creating the somatosensory feedback control in the posture. So in postural control, we have different mechanisms or different contributors. One is through the visual system, one is through the vestibular system, one is through the somatosensory system, and then two different mechanisms of postural control. One is the anticipatory postural control and compensatory postural control. Here, you need to focus more on anticipatory and compensatory postural control that might be asked as a very important question you can also study about the visual system somatosensory and the vestibular system in brief that would be fine and if you write about the other two systems that mechanism that is ap and cpa with examples and just mention about the somatosensory vestibular and visual system in brief you will get good marks so that's all about this video next video you will see different postural control